If you mix a metal with a compound of a different metal, then if the first metal is more reactive, if it's higher up the reactivity series, it will displace the second metal from its compound. Here is an example. Iron, in the form of steel wool, is added to copper sulphate solution. Iron is more reactive than copper, and so it displaces the copper from its compound. You rapidly see the red-brown of metallic copper appearing on the silver iron metal, and if you leave the solution long enough, you will see that it loses its blue colour and turns the pale green of iron too. Here is another example. Under a microscope, you can see a small piece of copper which has been dipped into silver nitrate solution. In this case, copper is the more reactive of the two metals, and you can soon see tree-like crystals of metallic silver appearing on the edge of the piece of copper. This type of displacement reaction is very useful when extracting metals from their ores, as carbon can be included in the reactivity series. In the case of iron, for instance, you heat iron in a blast furnace with carbon, there is a displacement reaction, and you get iron and carbon dioxide. Usefully, carbon dioxide is a gas, and so it leaves the mixture, leaving behind just iron. This particular reaction requires too high a temperature to carry out in the laboratory with any degree of success, but you can show a similar reaction with copper oxide. Copper oxide and carbon are mixed and heated. You can see a glow as the reaction begins to take place, and if you then cool the mixture rapidly, by plunging it into water in this case, you can see brown copper left behind. It does need to be cooled rapidly though, otherwise it will simply reoxidize back to the black copper oxide. A much better way to reduce copper in the laboratory, though not suitable for industrial use, is to use hydrogen. In this example, copper oxide is heated inside a glass pasta pipette, and then hydrogen is passed over it from a syringe. You can clearly see a glow of the reaction mixture and the appearance of metallic copper in the tube. The only other product is water vapour, and this is emitted from the end of the pipette as steam.